Hmm. All right. Let's see. So, okay, we are on. I'm going to wait for some people to get in. If anybody's going to get in. Um, So today we're going to get into Hatch Embroidery Digitizer. Um, I have a lot of people that ask me what I use uh, to digitize my files. I use Hatch Embroidery Digitizer. Um, a lot of other people use uh, Embrilliant. Some people use PE Design 10 or PE Design 11. Um, I'm just going to show y'all some of the features. Uh, the fee the the main feature that I'm going to show y'all is the auto digitizing feature. Uh, sometimes I use this feature when it's a super super simple design. Uh, my uh designs with a lot of details. Uh, I tend to uh manually digitize. Uh, and also I want to show people how uh that this program is not really hard to use uh even if you're a beginner uh it's not hard to use it's kind of like most programs out there uh you just have to know what tools to use at different times and when to use them so um uh we're gonna wait for a few more people to uh come in see if anyone else is gonna come in um while i'm doing this uh live but uh, if you've never digitized or if you are looking for a digitizer software to use, uh, this will be a good one to get. Um, now, Hatch Embroidery Digitizer is uh, expensive, but for what it can do, I see why it's expensive. Um, you can take uh, uh, other people's files, I say to you, uh, by a embroidery file for Etsy and you want to change around how it uh, <clears throat> uh, stitches out you can you can completely change the way uh, it stitches out or if you got may have purchased a bad file from uh, Etsy you can you can fix that file like this this program is really uh, smart enough to figure out what's going on so um <clears throat> Yeah, uh, we're going to learn a few things with the auto digitizing feature first before I take a super deep dive into uh, doing some hard stuff. I'm just going to show you all how the auto digitizing features work on this program and uh, hopefully y'all get something out of it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. No one is really in here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully y'all get something out of the video. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Hit the thumbs up button for me. That helps out a whole, whole lot, everyone. That thumbs up button uh, is free to hit. <laughs> um, and trust me, it, it, it does a lot for the channel and the algorithm on YouTube. Um, also, subscribe to the channel if you, uh, if you like what you see. Uh, you know, if you feel as though you're learning anything. Or you can learn from me go ahead and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna be posting some more videos uh soon i go i'm starting to go live a lot because i like to go live i like to see people questions um as they come and i can answer them as they come um 
instead of seeing them later on the comments. Sometimes I'll be at work, sometimes I get to them like super late. So uh, this is why I like to go live. So um, we're gonna go ahead and load up a, a simple uh, design and get started, all right? So let's go ahead and let's get to it. So to load up your designs, uh, you're gonna go over here to artwork. And let me change the hoop that I have because this is a head hoop. And let's change it to five by five body hoop. Uh, and body hoops do not come uh, already in this program. You have to put them in there. And body hoops pretty much have the size uh, of their hoops <coughs> on here. It tells you, you know, this is a. Uh, uh, not by six mighty hoop, but these are the actual dimensions inside the hoop right there. If y'all can see that, these are the actual dimensions inside of this hoop. So these are the dimensions that you're gonna put uh, and hatch embroidery digitizing for your hoop. All right. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna put this up here. We're gonna get started. I'm gonna use a five by five mighty hoop, and we're gonna load a design uh, for anybody that's just getting in here. Um, I'm going to show you the auto digitize feature on Hatch Embroidery Digitizer for those who don't have a digitizing software. This is a good software, a program to have. It cost me about uh, 1200 bucks, and it's expensive. Uh, there's other cheaper programs out there, but this one is really, really, really good for that price, y'all. Hi Lydia, how you doing? Um, gonna show some people how to digitize today, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop into it. Now to load your artwork on here, you're gonna go to the artwork tab, which is right here. You're gonna press the artwork tab, and it's gonna give you some options. You can scan your artwork in, or you can insert your artwork. And we're gonna press insert artwork. And we're gonna go to downloads, cause I have some simple pictures in here that we can that we can do. Okay, um, we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna do this. I guess this is the orange. Okay, um, I'm gonna stitch this out on my SC1900 in another video. Um, but I'm gonna show y'all how I digitize this file with the auto digitizing feature. Now, like I said. When I use the auto digitizing feature, it may be a super simple design like this. And there's three or four different ways that you can auto digitize and hatch embroidery. So um, we're going to get to that right now. We're going to go to the auto digitizing tab right here. You want to press that tab. And let's, let's size this down to where we need to size it down. And move it to the center. Make it a little smaller and center it. Now it has an auto centering feature, but I take that off. I want to put it where I want to put it at. Um, <clears throat> gonna center this design, then you're gonna press zero and bring it up. So I'm on a Mac, so uh, we're on the Windows side. This program also only works on Windows. I have an iMac with Windows uh, on it with Parallel, so I'm going to use my other keyboard for right now. <clears throat> Let me grab it, which is right here. It's my other keyboard that I use, y'all. So, the auto-digitizing feature. You have auto-digitizing instant embroidery. You have auto-digitize embroidery. You have color photo stitch. For those who send me photos, uh, if I can give you an example, uh, a photo, like a family portrait or a portrait of actual person in it, this is what uh, I would use to do that. But I don't like doing those type of uh, digitizing because it's a lot of, some. a lot of people are using the SC1900 and it calls for 
a whole load of colors uh, to be switched out. Even if I get it down to the lowest color group, you're probably going to be changing your colors. Your uh, probably no less than 12 times. So I don't do photos like that because they're they're really hard to do. Um, so photos like that I have loaded on the screen are the type of photos that I digitize. Those are much more easier for me to do and uh, I, I get better results with doing those. Okay. Um, this is another way you can auto digitize click the fill and I'm going to show you that and you have click the fill without holes and you have click to turning fill and you have click to outline. Okay. I've never used these three right here. Okay. I usually do my own outline and if I want to outline. I go to create layouts, but we're going to get into that in a second. So the auto digitizing feature for instant embroidery, you want to press this button right here. And when you press that button, it's going to analyze and it gives you an instant uh, embroidery file that you can have. Now you can go in, you can change this. Like you, if you see right here, you have a satin stitch here and you have the Tommy right here. You have a satin and you have the Tommy here and you have a satin here. You can change this uh, if you want to. And right here, this is, it's gonna, it's gonna give you this file. You're not gonna have a lot of control over what it's gonna give you. It's just gonna be instant. Now you can have control over it uh, after, um, after it makes the file. You can go in and control it. And you can go over here to sequence and it'll bring up your sequence of every piece that you and you can embroider so we're going to click this one we want to change that to, to tommy stitch because that's what all the other ones are we want to change this one to a to tommy stitch because that's what all the other ones are and you can go and change the pattern of the stitch also so if we come here let's Let's change the pattern on this one at the bottom right here so you can actually get a good view of, <clears throat> let's put these colors on here right quick, get a good view of the pattern. So there's a lot of patterns within Hatch uh, Embroidery Digitizer. You can, you can make these type of stitches right here. And let me tell y'all, the... Uh, the nicer the pattern, the longer it's going to take for your machine to stitch it out. So you have a one needle machine like the SC1900. It may take a, a few minutes, maybe five or five minutes just to stitch this part out right here. Because these are not simple stitches that it's putting in. Okay. These stitches like this are not super simple. And it goes all the way to 44. So you have a, a variety of of stitches to choose from when you're stitching out when you want to decide what type of stitch that you want on your design so we're just going to go back to the first one which is the regular tatami stitch and you go over to stitching if you want to add uh, a back stitch or you want to take the back stitch out the tab that you want to go over to is stitching okay you have your underlays, you, have, you can put two underlays under there, or you can turn it off and put one underlay. You have edge run, it's, and that's an underlay that I don't use a lot. I don't particularly like the edge one because it kind of leaves a little edge on your design when, when it's stitching out. You have double tatami, and let me go to true view so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to zoom all the way in. We're going to turn the background off. So to see what those underlays look look like, you want to zoom all the way in. And when I change this, you're going to see the lines. You're going to see they're going to change. That's an edge run. And you can see <clears throat> this is your edge run stitch going along right here. It's going to start probably start in the middle. And then it's going to do an edge run on the edge, okay, of your design. 
your tatami stitch. You see these lines in going like this? That, that's your tatami underlay, okay? That's your tatami underlay. Then you have your zigzag. You see your zigzags. They're going like this. You can change it. You can put another underlay. You can have a tatami and a zigzag. So you see the tatami is going to do the zigzag, and then it's going to do the tatami, and then it's going to stitch out uh, the tatami fill. So you can come in here and change the pull compensation. You can just change your stitch angle, and you can change the, the tie-in connectors and stuff like that. So we're going to zero it out, and we're going to go back to true view. That's one way you can auto digitize with Hatch Embroidery Digitizer. Um, and that gives you an instant uh, digitizer uh, design. So let's start over. Let's delete all this. That's just the first way you can auto use the auto digitizer feature in Hatch Embroidery. The second way you can use the auto digitizing feature is auto digitize embroidery. Now, what this one is going to do is going to give you an option. Uh, hey, Stacy, how you doing? I hope everyone had a good day. Um, I'm just getting home from the gym and stuff. My kids are running around crazy, so if you hear them screaming, they're acting. You know, it's almost time for them to go back to school. Yes. Cause they've been eating us out of house and home. <laughs> but um, the second way to digitize is um, go to auto digitize embroidery. You click that. Now with auto digitize embroidery, what's going to happen is it's going to give you some options. You remember when I pressed the auto digitizing instant embroidery, it just gave you an embroidery file. What's up, DJ Old School? How you doing, my brother? Um, it just gave you, uh, auto digitizing instant embroidery just gave you, uh, an automatic file. They need, you know, options and then ask you, hey, do you want this color in? Do you want to omit this color? Do you want this color to be, uh, satin? Uh, do you want it to be a tatami stitch? So with this auto digitizing feature, the second one, auto digitize embroidery, it's going to bring up this option right here. Now, you can choose how many colors that you want in your design. Okay. Right now, you have a total of eight colors. Let's say you're working on a single needle machine and you all want to change uh, colors eight times. You can bring, you can reduce that color and it'll automatically uh, change it for you. And it's going to change up here to six colors. You can reduce it some more. I say I just want to do uh, four colors. Let's do four. So, no, let's do five. Okay, so instead of this part being white, white but it had the little white uh, drop and a drop, it turns it to another color. So let's go back up to six. Six right here. So what you want to do with this part right here is... You want to, it's going to, you want to give yourself the best uh, embroidery option with the, uh, the second option. Because it, it kind of tells you, it gives you the colors and you, you get to uh, change the number of colors. Also, you can come up here and click on the color and you can locate it and it'll show you exactly which part of the embroidery it's going to be so if I press this first color right here and press locate we don't see nothing so that's no color there we don't have to worry about that press the second one and press locate now we have two of the pieces of the orange right there press white press locate we know we have a little white piece right there in the drop press this other color press locate so we got the these pieces right here, there's three pieces of the inside of the orange, and then you got the, the orange peel. Press the green, 
Press locate, you got this leaf right here. Press the other green, now you have the other leaf, okay? So um, once you decide that you just wanna go with six colors, or you can go less, you can, you can make it all one color or two colors, it's, it's really up to you. That's the uh, reason for this. The second auto digitizer embroidery feature, it gives you an option to decrease or increase your colors. Okay, so after you do that, you're going to press OK. And right here, it's going to come up with all of your colors. It's going to tell you what it is. Fill. A fill stitch is your tatami stitch. Now, if you want to change that to details, details will be satin stitch. Okay, if you press omit, that means that color will not, uh, you won't see that color. It's going to get rid of that color for you, okay? So you want to go, we're going to leave this fill. We're going to leave that a fill stitch. But what we're going to change is we're going to change the white color to details. Details will always be satin, a satin stitch on here. So when I press OK, and this should have been, both of these, all these should have been to time. I probably didn't read it, but... You have your satin stitch. This made a tatami stitch anyway. This made a tatami stitch anyway. I mean, this made a satin stitch. Sorry, y'all. And this made a satin stitch. But you can still go in and change what it is. You go to objects. You press on the one that you want to change. And you change it to tatami stitch. Okay? Now, I only use this feature, y'all. When I have a super simple design, something like this, if the design is uh, super detailed, like uh, LOL dog that I digitized before, I'm digitizing that uh, manually, completely, okay? So that's another feature. Uh, uh, that's the second auto digitizing feature within Hatch Embroidery Digitizer that you can use on simple designs. I, I only recommend using auto digitizing features on super simple designs like this because it, it'll come out correctly and it won't be all over the place. So I'm gonna go, we're gonna erase all this again. We're gonna start over. Now we're back to our original design and now we're gonna use this feature called click to fill. So when you press click to fill and you press, you hover your mouse over this design, okay? You see how it kind of lights up and it puts a little mesh around it. Push a mesh, it puts a mesh around each part. So if I click that right here, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna fill it with a tatami stitch. Anytime you do it this way, it's going to fill it with a tatami stitch. And click to fill. Let's say if I click to fill this part right here. Now you see this little uh, this little white part right there. It's not going to cover that up. Okay, it's going to leave that open. So I can go in and fill that part with the white myself. But let's go back. If I use click to fill without holes, it's gonna cover this whole piece up, which it should, okay? You see how it covered that whole piece up? It covered the whole thing, even the white part. But I can still click on it and get that white piece there, okay? So just because it covered it all the way up doesn't mean I still can't get that little, uh, uh, digitize the little white piece that's under there. What it's gonna do is gonna put stitches on top of stitches. Now, sometimes your one needle machine cannot handle stitches on top of stitches and, you know, it may cause needle breaks. What you can do with this is, and I'm going, I'm about to, about to kind of get off subject uh, just a little bit. Um, you want to go to edit objects. See it's going to work. Okay, you want to go to edit objects. And what you want to do is, and I made a mistake and press it twice, so let's delete this. 
you want to go to edit objects and you're going to click on that white the 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 white uh the white tatami sticks and you're going to press remove overlaps and over here if you look at your sequence you're going to see now that there's a space right here that it made an overlap so if i hide this part let's hide select it now you have a space right there you have a space right there it's not overlapping okay and that's a good feature to use uh when if you have a lot of stitching on top of each other you use that overlap feature to make a hole right there so you don't have stitches on top of stitches so let's un unhide all and let's keep going let's go back to auto digitize turn our picture back on click to fill and we're going to press the right now what you want to do is all the colors that are the same you want to press all the colors that are the same first because guess what this is the order it's going to go in when it's stitching out so now i'm doing all of these colors and now i'm going to do this color you see how the order is coming up over here on the left on the right side of your screen whichever order i click it in that's the order it's going to uh stitch out in so that means the green leaf, the dark green leaf is going to be last, okay? So when you use, if you ever get this software and you want to use the automatic features and you want to use click fill because it kind of gives you a little bit of control over the order of how you uh, digitize your program. The other two doesn't give you control over the order. Um, this one does, okay? Um... And also, you can play it to see how it's going to stitch out. Let's speed this up. It does have that feature where you can play it and so you can see how it's going to stitch out. And if you don't like the way it's stitching out, let's say you want to change the order. You can change the order of your stitch out. Oh, somebody's calling me. Hold up, y'all. Somebody will be calling
I didn't even know my camera cut off. I am so sorry. Y'all probably missed a whole lot of what I said. I am so sorry. Wow. That sucks. That sucks a lot. But, um, who? I don't know what. what. No, I wasn't on a phone call. Somebody called, did a video call, and that made the phone cut off. I'm so sorry, y'all. I don't remember where it cut off at. Can y'all tell me where it cut off at? So I can kind of go back. Where where did the sound where did the sound stop at? Do y'all know? Oh, I'm so sorry. That sucks. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can y'all hear me? Just after the stitch simulator. Okay. Um, let me go back to that. All right. After the stitch simulator, what I did was I was I was telling y'all after the stitch simulator, I was telling y'all that I am gonna do uh, another uh, digitizing video of a. Uh, more complex design. Um, like I said, on these type of designs, uh, easy designs like this, I would recommend you can use the auto digitizer feature. But on more complex designs, do not use the di auto digitizer feature. You need to digitize that manually on your own. So I'm gonna show y'all that. Um, I'm gonna show you the digitizing manual digitizing features which is on your left side you go down to the digitize tab these are all the digitize manual digitizing features right here you have all of these right here now a lot of people say this program is hard to use but what you have to learn is you have to get in this pro program you have to play around with it it's almost like photoshop to me I'm really, really super good at Photoshop. So this, I look at this like Photoshop, okay? So once you learn what each tool do, then you'll be able to come in here and digitize anything, but you have to learn the tools. Free open hand shapes. Free open hand is not you clicking. Let me, actually, I'm gonna show y'all that. Now this only supposed to be an auto digitizing uh, video, but I'm gonna show y'all what freehand it is because I want y'all to get an idea of the next video, what I'm gonna be showing y'all on the next video, okay? Let's bring our image back in. Now, when I do freehanded uh, digitizing, when I do freehanded digitizing, I use a tablet. These, because like I said, I am super good at Photoshop. I used to be a photographer and uh, and I used to be a uh, photo uh, editor. I, people would send me their photos and I would do high-end edits on them. So I use this to edit my photos and this will come with a pen if I can find it. If my kids didn't get to it. Okay, this is the pen that it will come with. What this pen does, and you can set it up, this pen controls your mouse. Okay, instead of using this for your mouse, you're gonna be used using this pen and this tablet. And it's gonna, your mouse is gonna move on the screen and you have shortcut, excuse me, shortcut buttons that you can change things to, okay? So, Freehanded, I'm gonna do it with my mouse just to show y'all how freehanded it is. Freehanded, a freehanded open shape is a shape that doesn't close. When you see freehand open shape, it's a shape that doesn't close, meaning it's a straight line, okay? Freehand closed shape is a shape that closes. Let's say, I'm gonna show you that right now. So, we're gonna do a freehand closed shape. And with freehand close shape, it's not like you're clicking 
and it makes the line for you. You got to actually draw it out with the mouse. So I'm going to show you all that right quick. So let's do a freehand close shape. So if I click, left click, and let's say I let go. It's not going to finish. It's not going to do anything because I didn't close it, okay? So what you have to do is you have to draw the whole thing out. And I only do freehanded when I'm using my tablet, okay? When I use my tablet, you have to draw the whole thing out. You're tracing right along the edge. And when you let go, when you get back to where you started at, then you let go. And then you get your tatami stitch, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a free-handed open shape. Free-handed open shape is just a straight line. So that could be a satin stitch, which I'm going to change it to. Go to objects, and I'm going to change that to a satin stitch. It's just a straight line. Open means straight line. Close mean full circle. Just think of it like that. Okay. Um, digitize close shape. Same thing. Digitize open shape. Digitize open shape is a straight line. Digitize close shape means you're going to close that uh, with whatever uh, shape that you're making. So I'm going to show you digitize close shape. And this is the manual digitize part of hatch embroidery. I'm only supposed to show y'all auto digitizing, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of manual. Now, when you do your digitized close shape, you're gonna left click and you're gonna hear uh, a beep sound. Now, when you left click, that's a straight line. When you right click, it makes a curved line. So this leaf is kind of curvy, right? So we're gonna left click, we're gonna go to here and left click it's going to make a, a low tone beeping noise then we're going to go here and right click now it did the shape of the left side of that leaf okay so now we're going to go here same thing left click no right click i'm sorry for a curve left click for a straight line and another thing you can do is you can stop right there in the middle press enter and it'll finish it for you now since the last thing i did was a uh a open shape i'm gonna have to change this okay i'm gonna change this to a fill all right we change it right here outline fill stitch i have had Mm -hmm. PE Design 10 that I use for this child. I started with PE Design 10. Um, PE Design 10 is a really great program. Um, it glitches a lot for me. Um, I had to find something else. It, it glitches a whole lot, especially PE Design 10. Um, I do have PE Design 11, but it won't work on a, a virtual system. I have it on my uh, my laptop. My wife has my laptop. Um, so I I just use straight up hatch. Um, so we're gonna do another close shape. I'm gonna show y'all one more close shape. Like I said, if you wanna do a straight line, you left click. If you wanna do a curve, you right click, okay? So we're gonna left click here. Let's press press the top's close shape, and we're gonna change this color to green anyway, okay? We're gonna right left click. Then we're gonna right click because we want to make a curve right here. You see how that leaf is curving? So we're gonna left click, and you're gonna hear the beat and sound change. Then when you get right here right click and it makes that curve for you okay the the uh the rule of thumb which i learned from somebody is to have as less nodes as possible okay 
Uh, sometimes in some areas of a design, you may have to put quite a few nodes there because there's a bunch of curves there. But a simple design like this, you don't want to hold a lot of nodes like this. You don't want to do this. This is what you don't want to do. You can, but it's easier to do it the other way. But I, if I can, if I can digitize a part of a design without having a whole bunch of nodes, that's the way to go. That's the rule of thumb. That's how I, that's that's how I learn how to uh, digitize. So um, try to put as less nodes as you possibly can, and supposedly be uh, digitizing to come out better. So. Um, that's a just a little bit, a little small dive into manual digitizing. Uh, I do get some designs off Etsy, but I don't use them like straight off Etsy. I will bring them up in Hatch Embroidery Digitizer and edit, re-edit them because it's a lot of different breaks. And I'm going I'm to pull a design from Etsy in here and show y'all why I come in. And I redigitize it sometimes. <clears throat> so let's press no. Uh, let's go new. Let's bring in a design. That's, I got a design of Etsy somewhere. And we're going to bring it in. I'm going to show y'all why I go in and redigitize the, not redigitize it, but edit it. Um, Let's find the Ready. Let's do let's do this Spider Man. Let's do this Spider Man. Now I want y'all to look to your right of the screen. You see all these little small stitches i get rid of all that i like a lot of stuff i come in and i change or what i do is i would weld these objects together because what your machine is going to do it's going to stitch a part out cut stitch it out cut stitch it out cut we don't want that so this is one of the reasons i'm gonna show y'all uh, how I edit uh, Etsy designs also. So that's going to be on another video because that's going to take super long. Um, that takes super long, y'all. Like, I don't buy the images of Etsy and put them straight in my machine. I put them on here. I edit them first. And sometimes when I edit them, they come out way better. So um, I'm going to show y'all that in another video. But I just wanted to show y'all a little bit of auto digitizing using hatch embroidery digitizer um a lot of people use in brilliance uh i tried in brilliance i didn't like the program um i thought the features were kind of all over the place for me um it was just it's a good program but the uh the way the program is kind of set up is kind of messy for me um this is a lot more familiar to me it's because it's almost like photoshop like a replica of photoshop almost to me so um this is why i use hatch embroidery now it's quite expensive it's really expensive it's 1200 bucks it's worth the price for the amount of things you can do on here it's worth the price, y'all. So um, you can make pay in installments. If you can't pay a whole twelve hundred dollars, what they do is you pay a hundred dollars a month until you pay it off, and they don't add no interest. So you can that's another way you can pay for this program. Um, but other than that, man, I hope y'all got a little something out of this live video. Please hit that like button. Um, Please hit the uh, subscribe button and the post notification. 
And I hope y'all got something out of using the auto digitizing features on hatch embroidery. Um, I'm gonna do another digitizing live doing a more complex design while I'm using uh, the manual digitizing features everywhere. So y'all stay tuned. I hope everybody had a great day. Hope all y'all had a great day at work because days at work be long. And for everybody, like I said in my last video, if you're just starting out with your business, keep striving, keep going. The sales are going to come, y'all. Like, let me tell y'all something. I have a website, my uh, DemiDiorBoutique.com website. And every time someone goes to that website, I get a notification on my phone. Let me tell y'all something. People go to the website every day, all day. But the thing with a new business is people are afraid to purchase because they don't know if their products are going to come or if they're going to get their products. Once you get that first sale, make sure you try to get that person to leave a review uh, on your website. Now, if your if your product comes to them bad, uh, they don't get their product at all. They're gonna leave a review, but usually people don't leave reviews when the product gets to them and it's good, it's perfect, it's you know they don't usually leave a review. They but they'll leave a, a bad review. Okay, so um, you want that good review on your on your uh, website and um. A lot of the stuff on my website I do sell, but it's people that know me personally. They come to me and hey, I'm, and they give me cash in my hand, but I have to stop doing that. This, that's one thing about me, you know. Um, I don't pass up the money because they they putting it in my hand. But uh, what I have to tell people to do, please go to the website and buy it. Um, because when somebody buys something on my website, it shows you that this person bought something on this day or this day or this day and it stays up there so um keep striving y'all like keep keep it going don't give up like entrepreneurs entrepreneurship is one of the hardest things you could ever get into and when you want to do this full time it's gonna take a while it's not it's, you're not gonna get all your machines and all this stuff you're not going to pay it off within that month, okay? <laughs> um, you're not probably not going to even get a sale within that month. So um, don't give up because it's very discouraging when you're not getting the sales off your website. Like, it, it can get discouraging and get bad. So, um, you know, keep putting your merchandise up there. Don't, don't give up. Keep telling people. Um, hey, I got this website, man. I make shirts. I make totes. I make this. I make that. Keep telling people. Eventually, somebody's going to go up there and say, well, let me buy something. And you don't like that sale, okay? But the reason why I don't have sales on my website is because everybody just come to me. They know where I'm at. They call or they know my number. But I have to stop doing that. I have to say, look, go to my website, buy it so I can get more customers because people from all over go to my website but they're afraid to purchase understandable i wouldn't purchase nothing from a website i know nothing about either that's very understandable we have to understand that you have to look at it as hey if i go to someone's website i really want this shirt i really want to buy it but damn am i going to get it uh, are they going to jip my money? These are the things people think about. As entrepreneurs, we have to think how customers think. Am I really going to get my product? Is it going to be done? Is it going to look like the picture that's on their website? Is it going to, you know, these are the things you got to put yourself in that shopper's shoes and say, okay, I, I feel where they come from. That's why I make the videos. I even have a blog on my website where I'm uh, linking my YouTube channel and stuff like that. Um, I know, man. I just be going live. 
I just be going live, man. Like, I just, I, I will come home. And honestly, bro, I would come home and just say, babe, I tell my wife, babe, I'm about to go live and get on here and go live. So there is a way I can set a schedule to go live so people can, okay, he about to go live at da -da 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 time. So I make sure I be there to watch it. But me, I just randomly go live just like I randomly put up a video. So I have to stop doing that also. I, it'd probably be more people in my lives. If I set a time on YouTube, but yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. But everybody, I hope y'all got a little something out of this. And please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. You know, this is like still, I've been doing this for a while, I'm almost to 500 subscribers. This is still out of my comfort zone. People like, I don't talk to a lot of people, like, I am like not. Uh, introvert, but uh, I get really bad anxiety when I talk to people. So, <laughs> so um, this is really still out of my comfort zone. Still trying to find my way within this YouTube place, but I'm, I'm gonna get there. So, I just thank y'all for the few people for uh, everybody that's came and watched the uh, the live, and I will see y'all on the next video. Y'all know how to do it. I'm peacing out. See y'all later.